Hello everybody, welcome back to some more crystal. Last time, I showed all my friends multicasting with multiple magics, not just two. And now, Pongo met a girlfriend, I assume, for some- well, why'd she have a ribbon? <laughs> his eyes shimmer with wonder. Is this love at first sight? Pongo blinks and shakes his head, snapping out of his trance. He bounces up to her. She smiles shyly. My blue Pongo shivers happily. He splits into a wide grin. Which quickly transforms into a lewd grin. Boy. <laughs> I don't even have to know what he says to know that was not the right thing to say. Oh no. The big Pongo scrunches up her little face in disgust. Boy. <laughs> Flash, she scampers away. Boy. Although my Pongo tries to stop her, he's too late and she disappears from view. Boy, boy. He waits and then slumps. Boy. Fault. He shrinks about two inches, absolutely crestfallen. Hey, little guy, are you alright? It was your own damn fault. <laughs> His body heavier than usual in the plates. He flops face first to the ground like a glob of ice cream. His voice is muffled against the grass. Oh no, I've never seen him like this. Pat him on the head. It's okay, we've all been rejected at some point. He snaps at me. Okay, maybe he's not really looking for advice. I pause and look around, trying to think of something. Sunlight glints off my gauntlet. I blink and glance down at it. Wait, I have an idea. What? Bunga looks up at the sound of me fiddling with my gauntlet. It takes me a few minutes to pry the crystal out, but when I do, I smile and extend it to him. Don't really need this anymore, so I'd like for you to have it. The Bongo's eyes go wide. He sits up. Boy, boy. A huge, delighted grin spreads across boy. his face. He leaps between the neck and shoulder, nuzzling me. He's cold against my skin, making me laugh and squirm. <laughs> I lift the crystal up to him and his mouth chomps over. Hi. He leaps down and hops away, content with his new treasure. He came on too strong. He did. He really did. Second <laughs> voice startled with me. I look around and the group is already finished cleaning up the camp and standing beside me. Karen shaking her head disappointedly. Doesn't matter the species, there's always one thing on their mind. Amelia pats the Pongo on the head. Do not fret. One day, you will find a mate with exceptional eyes and exquisite roundness. Exquisite roundness. Anna smiles encouragingly. Speaking of Pongos and relationships, what is Pongos mate anyway? Kara gives me a pointed look. See? One track mind. It just popped into my head. How do you make more Pongos if they're just balls of goo? Lena gives me a disapproving look. Zach just shakes his head. I think now's about as good a time as any to head out. I'm curious. Now I am curious. Agreed. Do Pong... I, you should have said, how do Pongos reproduce? <laughs> Not how do they mate. <laughs> do they reproduce asexually? Do they just split into more Pongos? Not fucking how do they mate, you tard. <laughs> Still feeling lingering effects of my cast. We make slow time. We continue our journey towards Hearthdawn. After about four more days of travel, we soon see the buildings casting tall shadows over the gates of Hearthdawn. The wrought iron gates have intricately curled cast iron tips. I can already tell that this place is more extravagant than any other town we've passed through. The guards look us over as we approach, but then when they see Leanna, they nod Welcome deeply. back, my lady. My lady? Um, yes. Thank you. Leanna blushes deeply as she stammers out a reply, and the guards bow slightly, and Leanna hurries us through. Tis so fedora, my lady. I've got to. I've got to. Looks like Chivalry isn't dead. Oh god, I pretend to tip my fedora and give it a flourishing bow. My lady. Lana's face is beat red. She quickly pulls me up. Stop that. <laughs> Lana hurries ahead and leads us through the finely cobbled streets. The shops front are all neatly primmed and respectable. Potted plants and other small decorations. Signs of various elegantly looping letters. I feel like I've just stepped into a Jane Austen novel. Amelia follows close behind, clutching the pongo to her chest. She surveys her surroundings with silent interest. Kara flashes Zach playful smile. My lord. No. Oh, come on. Won't you at least offer me your arm? 
Why? You always just take it anyway. She passed. You don't have a romantic bone in your body. I think you've got all the romantic bones in your body. I think you, like, counterbalance it just well. She tugs on Zack's arm anyway, if he doesn't resist, and they soon the two of them catch up. The further we travel through town, the more people seem to recognize Leanna and give her the same polite greeting. She nervously responds, trying to downplay the attention. Okay, now it's starting to get weird. I exchange confused glances with my team. You guys know what the fuck's going on? Finally we reach a deserted area of the town, and I smile returning to her face as she recognizes the shops and streets which, which we travel. Although she doesn't talk about her home much, I can tell she's happy to be back. Our boots crunch under the gravel as we turn to a long, tree-lined drive. Lush green lawns and telephone gardens sweep the road to the estate. Holy shit, that's a cool- is that a clock? Is that a clock? That's badass if it is. The estate is dazzling white, maybe four or five stories tall. Looks like two, but okay. <laughs> A large fountain sits in the center with water spraying and glittering in the sunlight beyond the mansion and framing scene of the mountains and the brilliant blue sky. Kara's eyes go wide. Whoa. Zach Lashel's appreciative, really. I got you. Damn. <laughs> Amelia pauses, taking in the mansion. The architecture for this building is quite exquisite. Would this be the town hall or Mariel house, perhaps? Lana twists her skirt nervously. Um, not quite. What is it? It's her house, you dumb. As if on cue, a small woman with simple clothes plated her passes by. She nearly drops the bag she's carrying when she sees Lana and dips into a low curtsy. The lady, you've returned home. Home? You grew up in style, huh? Lana's cheeks flame. It's nothing. Are you a princess? Lady, you didn't tell me you were a princess. Lady flushes a peony pink. Because I'm not. Well, excuse me, princess. Even if you aren't a princess, you're definitely living the good life. Sign me up. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves. <laughs> right. Lady sucks in a breath and seems like all the excitement has got her flustered. Let's just get going. We follow her up the gravel road. As we get closer to the fountain, I notice the same sigil of Leanna's letter is engraved into the stone. The waterworks run from a sapphire swan. The bungalow's eyes go wide. Boy, boy, boy! He squirms out of my scarf and leaps into the fountain before landing in a big splash. I think he's cannonballed right in there. Bongo burbles happily as the water as he continues to splash around, pretending to be a fish. Aww. Leanna rushes over to the fountain and gives the pongo a little tickle. He giggles happily, but he giggles happy bubbles. I wish I could save this moment forever. Shall I go and fetch the portrait, Master? Jesus Christ. Uh, no, that won't be necessary. <laughs> <laughs> They're on portrait, Master too. Just how rich are these As people? As you wish, my lady. I shall go and relate your father of your return. She curtsies again and then hurries towards the mansion. So that just happened. Indeed it did. Car giggles. I think you left out a few important details, which would have been nice to know. <laughs> Indeed. If we had prior notice of your noble heritage, perhaps we could have made more appropriate preparations on our presentation. Uh, presentation? Yes. Such as our choice of dress. She looks pointedly at Kara. I dress very appropriately for my profession. You did not move your lips when you said that. She... We just stare at her. She crosses well, her arms. Well, it's a little too late for that now. Don't worry about it. We'll just go in and I'll say hi to my parents, and I'm sure we'll be out in no time. Come on. This is going to go very poorly. You shouldn't have said that. Lena leads us to the front door. She reaches up to a golden door knocker and pounds twice. The double doors fly open, and Elder Man greets us with a warm smile. Lady Liana. Scroggins Wigglesworth. <laughs> That's an excellent name. Oh, I love it. Scroggins Wigglesworth. Leonid's face lights up. Scroggins! Scroggins. you're still doing well. Nope, Scroggins. Fuck that. Scroggins Wigglesworth. Fuck Scroggins. The butler, or Scroggins, as he were, bows at the waist. Lady Liana, how good to see you. Your father. 
He trails off eyeing her clothing. My lady, what are you wearing? <laughs> huh? She lends it down under white armor. Horror flashes across her face and she squeaks. Oh, this old thing? Um. It's a new uniform from age researchers. Dragon's frowns. Sir, please forgive my impudence. However, I do recognize the uniform of a mage knight when Fuck. I see one. After all, we do have a mage knight within the House of Dawn. Shit! <laughs> I didn't know that! Ugh. His voice rings with pride. Oh, Scroggins, if you only knew! Leanna's face turns Hey, you have no mind, Scroggins. Now, where is my father? Leanna adeptly avoids answering the air of authority with her voice silencing Scroggins. He's unconvinced, but lets the subject drop. He clears his throat. Ahem, as I was saying, my lady... Your father is in an important meeting. Lena friends. I see. And my brother? Your brother will not arrive until this evening. He looks apologetic. And the uh, rooms are not yet prepared. Lena blinks. Oh. My most profound apologies. You and your... He pauses he gazes and travels from Zach's weathered trench coat to Amelia's screen and from Kyra's skimpy outfit and he sees the sword strapped to my back and arches an eyebrow. Guests <laughs> are more than welcome to wait here, if you so please. No, thank you. Guests. <laughs> you heathens. <laughs> Filthy binge water heathens. How dare you be in the presence of my lady. Her eyes and her answer is unusually firm. Even Scroggins is surprised. Uh, of course, uh, as your lady pleases. Lena looks a little uncomfortable. How do you guys feel if I show you around town instead? I'd be down for that. Okay, That's a good idea. I'd be interested to explore where Lady Liana grew up. Uh, ooh, shit. Lena stiffens. Uh, it's just Liana. Kaya giggles, but Scroggins looks undisapprovingly. Lady Liana, we would be happy to provide someone to show your friends the town. However, we do request your presence here at the house. Oh? How come? It was requested by your mother that should you return, she'd like your opinion on the preparations for this evening. Lena sighs but not. Thank you, my lady. He bows and disappears in the mansion. Lena sighs again and turns to face Sorry us. about that. The burden of being a princess, hmm? Lena shoots her look and Kara merely smirks. Are you going to be okay on your own? Why would we not be? It will be no different from when we explore any other unfamiliar town. Right. Zack and I nod. With a short goodbye, Lena twirls around and enters the mansion, shutting the crystal door shut behind her. We head back towards the town. So what's the plan now? I think now? I'm going to go to the marketplace. What about you, Zack? Zack oh, probably go to the... Kara interrupts him. I don't know why I asked. What about you, Amy? She looks thoughtful. Perhaps I will search for a library. Sounds about right. We make our way to the down the gravel path until we arrive back into the town. We all split off and head in different ways. What do I feel like doing? Mm -hmm. Oh, let's just go down the line. Hey, Amy. She stops and turns. Greetings. Mind if I join if you? If you so wish. I do not mind. We begin walking in silence as we pass the marketplace. We see a stall loaded with volumes of books. And he slows down, croaking, craning her neck to look. It's a book stall. It looks interesting. Mind if we stop and look? She agrees and we approach. Hello, hello. What can I interest you in today? Toby. <laughs> what is with your fro, my dude? <laughs> We're just browsing. Amelia flips through one of the books. The pictures are quite fascinating. They are unlike any text I have seen before. Yeah, this guy... These are character books. Character books? Yes. He flips through one of the books that look like comic books with panels and hand-drawn characters speaking through thought and thought bubbles. As I glance the next novels Amy looking at, I notice they're all the same art style. These look like mangas I've seen back home. Amelia Blake. I see. And those are fictional narratives. Yeah. She hesitates and then continues flipping through it. Why don't you say comic books? I'm surprised you're still checking these out. I wouldn't expect you to be the type to interested in manga. In truth, I have never read one. I could help you find something you might like. That would be appreciated. What do you recommend? <laughs> Anything with robots kind of makes me want to do that. 
Okay, this seems dumb. Pretty Boy seems dumb. Anything with robots. I really think I really like anything with robots. Let me see. I browse the books for anything to catch my eye. Hmm, this one seems pretty similar. Students go to an academy, study how to pilot and maintain mechanical units. What are these units for? Uh, used for military use, but now it's recreational sport and entertainment. They had... Oh my god. Because their other game that came out after this one was exactly about that. Pixel Fades game, which I'll play later. But, Jesus. I had no idea that they, like... I wonder if they just did that and picked up the idea or had the idea already and made that. That could be enlightening. Amy accepts my suggestion and approaches the sale. I would like to purchase this novel. <laughs> Excellent choice. Excellent choice. She tells me. Are you also me. purchasing a character book? Sure. I'm not gonna buy a hentai book. One of those did catch my eye. I pick out one of the mangas and pay for it. I'm not buying a hentai book. I'm not a degenerate. <laughs> Salesman places my books into two separate bags. I'm excited to dive into a new manga. It's been a long time. Thank you for helping me choose the perfect fictional narrative. I hope you enjoy it. She nods. I have spent much time in leisure. I should make productive use of this free time hmm. and see if there's any research or reading I could do on either the Shadow Temple or Void to help us with our imminent battle. That is fair. That makes sense. I'll leave you to it then. She nods as we separate going different ways. I should find Zack. Let's go see what good buddy Zack is. My good buddy Zack's up to. I love how he treats them just like they're best friends and he's so indifferent about everything. I read my way to town until I stumble across the inn. I'm surprised to see Zack drinking at a table instead of his usual position at the bounty board. I slide in the seat next to him. Hey! Zack blinks as if coming out of a trance. Oh. Hey. His eyes seem distant, like he's got something on his mind. Everything okay? He doesn't say anything, his hands tighten into around his mouth. Yeah, I've... I've just been thinking. Hit me with it. I sit him straighter. Oh? I pause waiting for him to continue. About what? My parents. Oh, shit. <laughs> God damn it. Why did I even... This like is actually confiding in me. This feels like a whole new level of trust in our relationship. I get that. Sometimes I think about my parents, too. I wonder what they're doing, if they're thinking about me. Zach nods sympathetically. It's a bit different for me. Yeah, because his parents are fucking dead. I became an orphan when I was really young. <laughs> I don't remember my real parents that much. But I do remember the sense of warmth and security I had with them. I know that they loved me. They were good to me. They... He hesitated searching for the words. After they were taken from me. I guess I always hunted for that feeling of being accepted and wanted. I nod. Yeah. I can't even begin to imagine what Zack has gone through. Damien gave me that. He syrup bobs. He takes a heavy drink. After a moment, he shakes his Vera head. was already a part of the group when I joined. He had been there for a full year. Damon looked after the both of us. Since I couldn't remember my real father that much, I always looked up to Damon. He was like a father to me. I thought he was like a father to Vera too, but... His grip tightens around his mug again. We all love Damon. Everyone in that group supported each other like a real family. To know that Fair could betray us like that. His words feel heavy. They hang in the air. I'm not sure what to do, so I reach over and clasp a hand over his shoulder. I'm really sorry, man. He nods. Thanks. And it's all over now, anyway. He trails off. Sorry. I didn't mean to get all serious. No, it's completely fine. You've gone through a lot. Sometimes it's better to just let it all out. Zach nods. Thanks. I nod. What are your friends? What are friends for? A small smile tugs his Seriously, lips. though. If it weren't for you guys, this whole fair business would have been a whole lot worse. It would have been pretty goddamn hard so, to do. Thanks. You're welcome. Phones to come from the silence. Zach seems to more at ease now. I think he's finally starting to make sense of his past. Zach takes a few more sips of his drinks. I eventually get it to stretch out my legs. I think we're going to walk around outside for a bit. You want to join? He shakes his head. I've got a bounty board to check. Hell yeah, brother. He grins as I match it before saying goodbyes. As I leave the inn, I feel comforted knowing Zack feels more like his usual self. I make my way back to the town center and ponder my next move. That's my Kara! <laughs> I haven't hung out with Kara in a while. I wonder what she's up to. I eventually find her the marketplace with the Pongo. She holds up a nice skirt. Hey, Kara. Oh, hey. She absentmindedly greets me and then faces the Pongo. What do you think about this? Boy! 
<laughs> oh, you really think so? Pogo jumps up and down. Holy boy. Kara glances at this shirt again and browns. Uh, I don't know. Might be too fancy for his tastes. She puts it back in where she found oh. it. She gestures towards the tent and selling a genuine looking swords. Some of them are decorated with jewels. What about one of those? Those are nice, right? The Pongo nods in agreement. Really? On second thought, I don't know. He's not a sword guy. He's not guy. really a sword guy. He's not. There's a stall selling sweets and desserts. Everyone likes those, right? I don't know if he does. Really? Kara plants a hand in her Are head. you just agreeing with everything I say? <laughs> Pongo grins and bounces even higher than before. Ah! Absolutely! Kara sighs. Oh, that's not very helpful. I start from the left. I guess the Pongo isn't the best shopping buddy. What are you looking for? A gift for Zach. But he's a lot harder to shop for than I thought. Anything that's black will be fine. And the little blue guy here is not helping. Boy, boy. <laughs> she looks thoughtful as she turns back hey, to me. Hey, so you're a guy. What do you think Zach would want? Something with guns. Zach likes to shoot things. Kind of blinks and laughs. True. You have any kind of games or something that involves that? Involves what? Shooting. Why not? Kind of thinks about it, then she breaks. Yeah, I think I have an idea. Kara leads me off to a different section of the shop that is another man at the counter. He's surrounded by trinkets Hello. and toys. Hello. How can I help you today? I'm looking for wind rings. Of course. Right this way. She shows us, he shows us a sphere. Here it is. I blink. I don't get it's it. It's a game. You shoot targets. What are the targets? It's just a sphere. The targets are activated by wind magic. But see that button on the top? You press it and the sphere shoots out energy rings, which go in six different directions. You have to try to shoot within the target. That's pretty neat, actually. I'm surprised you haven't heard of it. This game is pretty popular. I'm kind of a country bumpkin. Uh, I'm not from around here. <laughs> this salesman this comes with an underpowered wind discharger. You won't find a better deal anywhere else. I'll take it. The Bungo boy, wins. boy! Kara beams after purchasing the game. Her eyes zone to the location with silken garments. Oh, those look pretty. She starts to head to the section of the store. I begin to follow her when she stops me. You might not want to go in there. Yeah. The fuck? Why no? She points to the sign which clearly leads to Vicky's Mysteries. <laughs> Vicky's Mysteries. Not quite Victoria's Secrets. <laughs> I take a longer look inside the stall and notice bras hanging on the shelf. Oh. Man, I probably wouldn't be happy to hear that he went into a shop in my car. I think I'll go take a walk around town, actually. Car I'll rinse. catch up with everyone later. I'm about to scoop up the Pongu, but he follows Kara inside. A little pervert. <laughs> oh well, I make my way out of the shops and back to the center of town. Think about my next move. Duh. I like to spend more time with Leanna. Maybe I should go see what Leanna's doing. She's probably done whatever she had to do by now. I retrace my steps from back to the mansion. It's not hard to miss. It's sparkling and white. Sitting on top of a hill overlooked to the entire town. I soon make it back to the estate. The servant shows me inside and leads me to the crystal patio doors, opening them to reveal a magnificent courtyard. Hey! Oh, hey! Leanna looks surprised to see me, but not what unhappy. What are you doing here? Just thought I'd come by and see if you needed any help. Thanks, but I'm alright. Give me one second, okay? She disappears in the mansion. I take a moment to look at the courtyard. There's a maze of hedges in the middle of the garden. Surrounding it are bushes and flowers. Their petals add a dash of color amidst the green like a pastel rainbow. After a few minutes, Lena emerges. Follow me. She grabs my hand and leads me further into the courtyard. Where are we going? I want to show you something. We twisted the maze of neatly trimmed hedges. The flowers sway as we pass them, as if waving hello. Finally, we pause in front of a gnarled tree. This is where I spent most of my childhood. By this tree? Yep. Well, the whole courtyard, really. My brother and I would play hide and seek in the maze when we were younger. Sometimes I'd hide when my parents wanted me to do something I didn't want to do. Scrogens would spend hours trying to find me. I got really good at hiding and was able to sneakily move to a new spot if I knew he was coming close. <laughs> I imagine the young man peeking behind one of the hedges and smile. I'm just rocking to see him think so, but that's adorable. <laughs> Leanna laughs. I used to get into so much trouble when he'd eventually find me. So, what's the story behind this tree? Her face lights up. My brother and I would train here. 
Train? Yes, in sword fighting. Oh, she noticed the surprise in my face. Why do you seem surprised? I don't know, I just assumed you did all your training at the academy. She shakes it her head. It was proper for my brother to be trained in combat. I would often sneak here to watch him. And sometimes he'd teach me in secret. When my parents discovered I wanted to learn, they let me. I'm not entirely sure why. They're usually pretty strict about things, but I guess they felt like it wouldn't really matter either way. At least you got the opportunity. She nods and places a hand affectionately on the tree, a step closer and notices the nicks and barks and casualties from their sword practice, I assume. It sounds like you and your brother have always been close, too. She brightens again in the mention of yeah, him. He's a bit older than I am, so he's always looking out for me. Even when I was little, if father was angry with me, my brother would take the brunt of the anger to try to protect me. She turns to me, light dancing in her eyes. I'm nervous, but I'm also very excited to see him again. It's been too long. Suddenly a smile, a sly smile spreads across Follow her face. Me. Again? Come on! <laughs> she goes my hand and sees me deeper into the garden. Where are we going now? She giggles. You'll see! Lena pushes aside some of the greenery, revealing a small gap. It looks though it may have been bigger before, but it's been overgrown. What is this? Her blue eyes twinkle. So impatient. Come on. We squeeze our way through having to bend low to avoid hitting our heads. Some skinny branches scratch at my skin. After a while, Leanna pushes aside even more branches and leaves. A soft breeze laced with the scent of something floral that caresses my face. She leads me into a tiny grass area surrounded by trees to remind me of weeping willows, except the branches bloom with long streams of sky blue flowers. They weave over us like a canopy, blocking up most of the sky and sunlight. Some golden beams are able to filter through, but the flowers are fluffy and thick. I let out a small breath. This is beautiful. Yeah. The branches sigh. Streams of blue, blue, streams of blue blooms flutter in the breeze. Lana reaches up to touch one, her fingers lingering at if the If I end. ever wanted to be alone, or not have the servants find me, I'd go here. She's smiling, but her voice is soft as the flowers. She meets my eyes and blushes, looking away. Why did you, why did you want to be alone? She has a taste. I struggled a lot with what I wanted to do, and what my parents wanted me to do. I didn't want to disappoint them, but there were so many things they wanted me to do I felt was pointless. Like what? Like embroidery lessons. Ah, her voice raises in frustration. Those stupid tiny stitches! Do you know how many times I pricked my fingers because of that? I was expecting something more serious. And it's not even useful serious. sewing, like mending clothes. It's literally just for decoration. But a lady embroiders. And so my mother insisted that I do so too. Let the frustrations out. I had no idea you'd been holding onto that for so long. She looks surprised. Me neither. Well, let it all out. What else are you angry Corsets. about? Corsets. What's so bad about letting a lady breathe? I laugh. <laughs> there are a few leaves sticking up in her hair from the shrubs. I smile, reaching to pluck them out. Lena meets my gaze and blushes. These sapphire petals had fallen into her hair and brush those away too. My fingers slide down the end of her blonde locks and twirl and curl. I twirl the curl of her hair around. Lena smiles bashful. Kiss the girl. <laughs> I don't want to risk it. I to Leanne and I can't look away. Everything about this place is magical, picturesque. The tranquility of the garden envelops me. Beneath the waving branches of flowers, I see perfection. I pull Leanna into my arms. Her soft arms circle around my back as she rests her hand on my chest. And then, the faint voice of someone calling. Lady Leanna! Oof, we freeze. Lady Leanna! The voice rises high. Lady Leanna, where have you gone? Oh no! Leanna's face flushes. She wiggles until I release her. We better go! Based on what you said, we've still got a few hours before he finds us. I try to pull her back and she escapes my grasp. Nuh-uh, it's time to go. Yeah, come on now. I'm like, what the fuck? She smooths out her hair and skirt and I sigh. Alright. I get... I'm gonna follow her really Wait! We can't leave together! Yeah, of course, you dumb fuck. Jesus, what is he talking? Good God! Why? Man, because... Of... Yeah, you idiot. Just wait here for a little bit. I'll go back first, and then once there's been enough time, then you can follow. Yeah, hang on for like ten fucking minutes, dude. Okay. She smooths out her hair and skirt one more time, just as she's about to leave, and suddenly turns back around. She plants a quick peck on my cheek and then flashes me a smile and leaves. I wait for about ten or fifteen minutes, there you go, before finally making my way through the garden. This guy. Jesus Christ. 
I get lost a few times in the maze, but eventually find my way back out. As I return to the main estate, I decided to head back to town to see what else is going on. I walk back to the driving so I reach the top of the streets of town. I think I finally spent this... I think I'll finally spend some, some me time. I wander around town checking out the shops and sites. It's not too different from most of the places we've visited so far. Although I do notice how clean and well kept the place is. Once the sun begins to dip in the sky, I head back towards the mansion. And here is where we'll end it. Catch you guys on the next time.